in this lecture we are going to continue with a system modeling and now we will discuss generator modeling so in order to model a generator if you see a generator can be simply represented by the resistance of the generator the reactance of the generator and that's it so if you at least have these two values you can model your generator but for a generator these reactance values they vary with respect to time so if you see if uh, whenever there is a short circuit fault on a uh, generator side or in the system your generator goes through some transformation usually for the first few cycles your reactance is restricted by or limited by sub transient period so this sub transient period is known as this the resist the reactance within this period will be known as sub transient reactance similarly after few second after few cycles the fault current is reduced and then it enters into a transient period and during this period the short circuit is limited by transient reactance and ultimately after many cycles or many seconds the generator reaches its steady state period and during this steady state period the reactance is known as the steady state reactance or synchronous reactance so whenever you have to model a generator you need to know all these three reactances for the steady state analysis or the load flow analysis we only require synchronous reactance or the direct access reactance but if you are performing short circuit analysis we will be usually considering sub transient reactance because during the sub transient reactance the reactance is the lowest and the short current short circuit current during this period will be highest so usually in simulation softwares like etap data for the generator is input on its own base therefore no conversion is required so a good thing regarding the generator data in etap is whatever data you have from the name plate rating you can simply take this data and put it in your etap model and that's it furthermore once you have given these reactances the additional data you will require in the uh, etap or any other software for solving the case is the pmax and the pmin so what is the range in which the generator can change its output so you need to provide the two extremes of your generator similarly we need the voltage source here so for the voltage source what we need to inform uh, to the software is that what is my capability limit generator reactive capability limit because reactive power is directly proportional to the voltage when we change the voltage what we are basically trying to do is we are trying to change the reactive power of the generator so we need to provide the generator with these values what will be the value of q max and what will be the value of q min so uh, so that our generator can change its voltage when we ask generator to change its voltage it will see that whether i am within this range if it is within this range and it is going to change the voltage within this range and this is given by in the form of this generator capability curve if you see here here is a typical generator data model if you see in this model here you have this sub transient reactance you have this transient reactance you have this synchronous or direct access reactance so for the load flow analysis you can take this uh, direct access reactance whereas for the short circuit analysis or transient stability analysis we will be requiring both the sub transient reactance and the transient reactance along with these time constants and the additional data here available is what is the voltage of the transformer what is the uh, mva or the kva rating of the transformer similarly here is a typical reactive capability curve so what is this reactive capability curve telling us that for what amount of active power for a certain amount of active power what is the reactive power that can be provided by this generator so these point this point represents q max and this point represents q min so if we see here if i operate my generator at somewhere here then at this point my q max will be equal to this much and my q min will be equal to this much and we have to make sure that when we are providing the active and reactive power to the generator we are not exceeding its limits because what is happening in a generator if you see a generator uh, in a physical con uh, configuration what are you going to have you are going to have some stator within this stator there is going to be a rotor uh, and on rotor some field winding is going to be there 
and this field winding is going to be energized with the help of some shunt generator which is going to provide the dc current to this winding and when this dc current is provided a magnetic field is created then this uh, rotor is uh, rotated with the help of a prime mover and the magnetic field uh, generated by this rotor is induced into the armature or the stator and then a stator current you get some stator current from this which is known as the output of the generator so by controlling this field current this dc field current you can change the value of this reactive power because what you are trying to do is you're trying to change the flux in the system flux in the generator so but how much maximum current you can provide you can provide the current up to the value where you do not get rotor winding limit so because you, uh, when you increase current into your conductor what will happen a heat is going to be generated due to resistance within the conductor so how much you can go so this is providing the value this is the maximum limit till where you can go in the over excited range the uh, the positive range of the reactive power is also known as the over excited range whereas the negative range of the reactive power provided by the generator is also known as the under excited range uh, but what happens in the under excited range in the under excited range what you will be doing is you will be reducing your dc current so when you are reducing your dc current what you are trying to do is you are trying to reduce your flux so you can reduce your flux reduce 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 you can reduce it up to a certain value because if you will make it zero loss of excitation will happen so you need to know what is the but if you will the flux will be weak it means that the induction in the stator side of the uh, generator will also be weak and it may cause the heating of the stator so that is why you have some limit here so for the over excited range what is happening you are providing see uh, in over excited range you will be providing the megawatt to the system whereas in under excited range you will be absorbing reactive power from the system now from once we have discussed generator the other side of uh, the uh, industrial system or power system is the load so load there are several ways to uh, define your load or model your load but some of the common ways to model the load are the constant power load constant impedance load or the constant current load or your load can be a combination of all these three so what do we mean by a constant current load constant current load is going to be a load in which the current of the load will remain constant irrespective of the change in voltages similarly in the constant power load the power of the your load is going to remain same in respect uh, with respect to the change in the current and the voltage and whereas in uh, constant impedance load your impedance of the uh, load is going to remain same uh, with the changing current and load so what are the examples of a constant power load your typical induction motor load is an example of a constant power load what happens in an induction generator when you have an induction generator when the voltages will decrease the uh, motor will increase its current so that it can maintain the same mva rating or the uh, rating of the induction generator so p is equal to vi in order to maintain p it will if the v is reduced the i has to increase and the example of a constant impedance load is your uh, lighting load uh, if you see your uh, typical light bulb which has a tungsten filament in it what happens when you have a reduction in voltages your uh, light bulb becomes dim so what is basically happening there is that when the voltages has reduced the current is trying to reduce so that the, the value of z is going to remain the same and an example of a constant current load is a battery your typical battery because irrespective of the voltages uh, what you are providing to the battery irrespective of the power what you are providing to uh, the battery the current the charging current of the battery should remain same so when you are modeling the load you need to know what kind of load you have do you have a lightning load so if you have a lightning load you can model it as a constant impedance load if you have a typical induction motor load or a motor load large motor load in your system or all the type of load in your system is a motor load then you can model it with the help of a uh, constant power load if you have a battery or a electronics kind of a circuitry in your system which takes constant current so you can model it as a constant current load so or it can be a combination of all these three because sometimes you are not able to figure out what is the uh, uh, composition of each kind of load so in such cases you provide a um, lump load which is the combination of all these